Hi, welcome to another tutorial in my series on applying Newton's second law, that is force equals mass times acceleration, to a particle. And in this example, what we've got is a particle of mass 5 kilograms. It's released and rest on the smooth plane inclined at 30 degrees to the horizontal. And what we've got to do is find the acceleration of the particle, the normal contact force, and the speed after 3 seconds. I like this example purely because it should illustrate quite a few common features that you're going to find in similar problems. So, before you start to do a problem like this, make sure you draw a diagram. And we've got part of the diagram drawn here for you. We've got our inclined plane, inclined at 30 degrees to the horizontal. And we've got our mass of 5 kilograms. And this mass is somewhere in the middle of motion. Because what we've got is our particle originally started from rest. It was released from rest as we got up here. So what I'd want to do is add in uh, our particle at the top here. Let's imagine that when it was up here, okay, it was released from rest. So I'd want to put it up here and put an arrow indicating that it was about to move in this direction down the plane, okay, but it started from rest. So I'll put zero meters per second in there. And this particle is going to slide down then and it's going to come to a point, say here, where it's moving downwards with a speed of v meters per second. So I'll illustrate that it's going downwards and I'll call that final speed v, v meters per second. So I'd encourage you to do that. Now because it's changing its speed in this direction, it must have an acceleration. So, in this general position, above it, I would write that it's accelerating. And we use the standard symbol, a double arrow, it's accelerating down the plane, and I'm going to use A for acceleration. A meters per second per second, they're the units there. Okay, so we've got the speeds, we've got the acceleration. By marking in the direction, not only we've got the speed, we've got the velocity. Remember, velocity is made up of speed and direction. Now I go to this particle, and I'm going to mark in the forces that act on this particle. And the first force that comes to mind is the weight, which acts downwards. So I'd mark that in as the weight. And weight is equal to mg mass times acceleration due to gravity. So in this case the mass is 5 kilograms and we'll use g there. So we've got 5g and the units would be newtons. We're going to take g as 9.8 meters per second per second throughout this problem. Okay. What other forces would act on this particle? Well there'll be the normal contact force we've got to find the normal contact force in this question. Because it's in contact with a surface, that contact force will act at right angles to the surface. So we we'll just mark it in there. And the standard letter that I prefer to use is R. R for a reaction from the surface, R Newtons. Are there any other forces acting on this particle? Well, it's going down a smooth plane so there's not going to be any resistance due to the surface and if I ignore air resistance then these are the only two forces. It's very tempting, I find quite a lot of beginners often want to put a force going down the plane because intuitively you know that it moves down the plane so they tend to put a kind of another force here. Don't, okay? It will move down the plane due to another force, the component of this weight, which I'll show you in a moment. Okay, well we've got our forces marked in. Now what I'd encourage you to do as well is to extend this line down here into the plane, like that, a dotted line, 
and mark in this angle in here. That angle is going to be exactly the same as the angle of the plane, 30 degrees in this case. Why is that? Well, you can just work it out from basic geometry of a triangle. What we've got here is a right angle triangle. If this is 30 degrees, this is 90, then this angle up here will be 60 to make the 180 degrees. And we know that this is 90 degrees, this angle, so if this was 60, this will be 30 degrees. So it turns out whatever this angle is, this angle will always be exactly the same. So I definitely encourage you to put in this dotted line when you get questions on planes and marking that angle as the same as the angle here. I'd also encourage you to mark in another dotted line, one straight down the plane like that. Why would I want to do this? Well, it helps to answer this question. Because what we're going to do is consider motion down the plane. We're going to start by resolving down the plane. And we're going to be looking at what kind of forces act down the plane in the direction of motion. And when we resolve, we're looking to apply force equals mass times acceleration, Newton's second law, F equals ma. So what is that resultant force down the plane? Well, R doesn't contribute to pushing down the plane because this force is at right angles to the direction down the plane. Forces at right angles have no effect. But this 5G Newton force, the weight of the particle, well, part of this acts down the plane. What I'm going to do is split this force into two components. And if you're unsure about splitting a force into two components, then go on my website and you'll see a link to that. If you go into the index, look under resolving forces. Okay, I'll take you through though basically what happens. What we do is we look at the components of this 5G Newtons. That is that we look at one going in this direction down here. We'll just do that. And we look at one component going in this direction. Now, 5G Newtons, this component here contains the 30 degrees. And in my tutorial on splitting a force into components, I showed you that the one that contains the angle is always cosine. 5G cosine 30 degrees. So this force down here is 5G cos 30 degrees. And we won't forget the units there, that's Newtons. This component, the one at right angles to this one, doesn't contain the angle of 30 degrees. So the one that doesn't contain it, it excludes it, is sine of the angle. So this will be a force here of 5G sine 30 degrees. Just squeeze it in there. And don't forget the units, that would be Newtons. So we've got our two forces here that can replace the weight. Okay, I can get rid of that. I can just think of this problem as a particle acted on by these forces here, these three forces. So when it comes to resolving down the plane, all I'm interested in is the 5G sine 30 force because this force down here is at right angles as well to the direction of motion. So when it comes to that resolving down the plane, all I'm doing is having a force of 5G sine 30. And this force, this resultant force, equals mass times acceleration by Newton's second law. And the mass is 5 kilograms, and the acceleration we're trying to find is A. So you've got 5G sine 30 equals 5a. Now normally I wouldn't draw these forces in. I would basically take them out and just have a diagram like this. But I would understand that what is going on. 
I would resolve down the plane and just say, OK, how much of this 5G Newtons acts down the plane? 5G sine 30 degrees. And that equals the mass times the acceleration. OK, so all we've got to do now is just work this out. Just 5G sine 30 on your calculator and then divide by 5. Well, that leaves you with the acceleration, actually, equals g sine 30. And if we take g then as 9.8, you find that, therefore, the acceleration is 4.9 meters per second per second. Don't forget those units there. Now, when you resolve parallel to the plane, always make sure you resolve in the direction of motion. Don't try and go against the direction of motion. It's not wrong if you do, but it just can cause complications which lead to errors. Look, I'll show you what happens if you resolve against the motion. You should have this equation. So if you resolved up the plane, how much force acts up the plane? Well, this component of the weight 5g which acts down the plane that was 5g sine 30, is in the opposite direction to this. So we would have to write minus 5g sine 30. And this would equal the mass times the acceleration. The mass has no direction, 5. But the acceleration, my arrow is down, in, down the plane, so because I'm resolving up the plane, I must make sure that I put that the acceleration is minus a. So be very careful if you do resolve in the opposite direction to motion. It might be easy to make this mistake, forget to write minus a, or forget to write a negative force here. Anyway, if you were to work this out, those minuses would cancel one another and you would actually end up with exactly the same result, A is 4.9, but I would certainly discourage this method. Always I would encourage resolving in the direction of motion. Okay, well that's the acceleration. We wanted the normal contact force. So to get the normal contact force what I want to do is now consider resolving perpendicular to the plane. And I'm going to resolve away from the plane in that direction, that direction being positive. So when I resolve perpendicular to the plane, I've got all of R acting in the positive sense here. So that would be just all of R. But when it comes to the weight here, 5 G Newtons, Again, this is not on this dotted line. This force is not on this dotted line. So I need to find out how much of the weight acts down this dotted line. And that's the component of the 5G Newtons. And it will be 5G cos 30. Remember, it's the force that contains the angle, 5G cos 30. And it's in the opposite sense to this. So it'd be minus 5G cos 30. And that is the resultant force acting on this particle in this direction. And because this particle doesn't move relative to the plane in this direction, it's in what we call relative equilibrium, then that resultant force must equal zero. You could look at it another way, that this force, this resultant force, equals mass times acceleration. So I'd have 5 times the acceleration, but the acceleration in this direction is zero. It doesn't leave the plane or move into the plane. It's in relative equilibrium. So 5 times zero would still give you zero. So two ways of looking at that. So just rearrange this now to get R that normal contact force and R equals 5G cos 30 degrees. And if you work that out on your calculator, you'll find that therefore that normal contact force is 42.435 and so on. So if we were to round this up, we've got that the normal contact force, 
let's just write that in the contact force equals let's say 42.4 newtons to one decimal place now the other thing that we've got to do in this problem is to work out the speed after three seconds remember it started at rest here accelerates down the plane and we've got to calculate the speed v and this is a typical case for using a suvat equation because we've got constant acceleration suvat s u v a and t s for displacement do we know the displacement no we don't okay so we don't know that do we know u the initial velocity yes it was zero so we've got zero meters per second do we know v the final velocity well of course not that's what we need to find acceleration yeah it's acting downwards okay and we found that 4.9 and what I should have mentioned is that uh, 4.9 meters per second per second there what I should have mentioned we should really have a positive direction when we're using SUVAT because we're dealing with vector quantities here so I'm going to take the positive direction down the plane in the direction of the acceleration so acceleration will be positive time well we know the time it was three seconds so t equals three seconds and we can put this information together to find out v by using v equals u plus at v equals u plus at a standard equation you should know so therefore if we want v v equals u u is zero plus the acceleration 4.9 times the time of three seconds work that out and what you end up with is that v equals 14.7 meters per second and there you have it so I hope that gives you some idea then of how to draw your diagrams how we use the components of a force here to work on this kind of cross if you like okay if I was to carry this cross in this direction like that we consider forces down the plane and we consider forces perpendicular to the plane. So we need to split this force, the weight, into two components to do that. Okay, well that brings us to the end of this particular tutorial.